and uh, so I had to wear a dunce cap hmm. when I was in first grade. Nice. And um, the teacher in front of my parents said, I, I'm afraid your son will never be able to read or write or communicate, never mount a thing, never go very far in life. But I would put him into sports because when I got out of the braces at age four, I just ran everywhere. And so I became like the super, you know, runner because it seemed like, you know, every kid tries to find some place where they excel. And mine was running after getting out of the braces. I just wanted to run and keep my legs straight. And I, I just ran. So she suggested to my parents that he won't learn how to read, but he'll learn how to run. <laughs> I've been on the run ever since, I guess. I didn't tell him that, so I just told him, I'm going into town. He said, well, if you go to town tonight, you don't come back. I went, wow. Okay. He wasn't really upset. It wasn't like kicking me out of the house. It was just sort of like a, a disciplinarian thing because he wanted me at home. So I left, and I pecked up my bag, and I, I became a street kid. And it wasn't because of any major argument, really. It wasn't major. It was just he was just trying to be firm, trying to help me. And um, But I started to live on the streets. I got used to it. And then, um, so people live in a fantasy and they, and they many times set after goals that aren't really truly important to them. And I, I get it every week in the break to experience people come in with goals that aren't really true. They're delusions and fantasies that they expect and they beat themselves up going, why am I sabotaging? Why am I, you know, not focused? Why can't I continue to do this? What's wrong with me? Nothing. You're being led to what is important to you, but you fantasize about what it is. And it's not really what it is. Your life is demonstrating what it is. And you keep trying to force it into something it's not. And I got up at two in the morning and did meditation and yoga for 30 minutes. And then I uh, started speed reading. And by the time I was 23, 24, I was uh, knocking out four to seven books in the morning between 2.30 in the morning till 6.30. No <laughs> About a book an hour, a book every 45 minutes. And then I would go jogging, come back in, shower, go to school until the afternoon, go to clinic and then come back at seven at night and teach whatever the books that I'd read. Well, passion, if you look at the etymology, comes from pati and pasio, which means to suffer. And most people today are running around saying, oh, find your passion, get no passion, oh, I want more passion, everything else. They don't even know that that word means to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> it comes from an animal behavior from the id of Freud that's basically meaning it's to strive for that which is unavailable and try to avoid that which is unavoidable and to try to do something that's an impulse and an instinct that's not really meaningful. Hmm. And so if you want passion, I, I tell people, if you want to go passion or have compassion, which means to suffer with somebody, great. I'm not interested in that. I have no interest in passion or compassion. I'm interested in a mission, an inspired mission that's a calling from within, that's based on your highest value, that spontaneously is inspired from within. If you need motivation on the outside to get you to do what you say is important, it ain't important. When you're living by your highest value, you spontaneously are inspired from within. You don't need motivation. I don't need motivation. Mm. I would need motivation cooking. I haven't cooked since I was 24. I haven't driven in 29 and a half years. I delegate everything off my plate except research or I travel teach.